Income Tax 2022-2023 Earned Income Tax Credit, the EIC No Children Tax Software Example. Let's do some wealth preservation with some tax preparation. Here we are in our example form 1040 populated with Lacert tax software. You don't need tax software to follow along, but it's a great tool to run scenarios with. You can also get access to the form 1040 related forms and schedules at the IRS website, irs.gov, irs.gov. Starting point, we have the single filer, Mr. Anderson, living in Beverly Hills, 90210, 100,000 W-2 income, which is way over the threshold to get the earned income tax credit, but that's just where we have been starting, so we'll start there. And then we've got the 12,950 standard deduction uh, being taken. That gets us to the 87,050 taxable income, page number two then, 14,774 is the tax being calculated. We're imagining 15,000 withheld for a refund of the 226. Now we wanna focus in on the earned income credit particularly related to people that have no children. Now note, when you think about the earned income tax credit, you have to have some income in order to get it, but then it caps out at some income level and goes back down. And you can think about that threshold with regards to these three or four categories, no children, one child, two child, three or more children, and think about what that curve will look like. So for example, we're gonna focus here on zero children, which means uh, the maximum credit at that level is only 560 as opposed to three or more children where it's 6,935, and the maximum AGI is 16,480. But that max really is when the credit goes below to zero. What we want to know is where where is the max AGI that I can get to in order to get the full biggest credit of the 560 if you're married filing joint the max amount is 22610. So let's see if we can support accounting instruction by clicking the link below giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website broken out by category further broken out by course each course then organized in a logical reasonable fashion making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a youtube page we also include added resources such as excel practice problems pdf files and more like quickbooks backup files when applicable so once again click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it to get an idea of this obviously the income is way too high for us to be able to i uh, claim the earned income tax credit at this level let's bring it down to that to that uh 16 for let's let's bring it down to 16 480 just to get an idea of this curve and we're gonna go okay bring it back on over still no earned income tax credit because we're above the threshold but once i bring it down a little bit below that let's bring it down to 16,000. now we have a little bit of the earned income tax credit being calculated so notice you can, when they use these thresholds, usually the IRS likes these end thresholds because it kind of makes them look better. It's like you get you get this earned income tax credit up until your income is sixteen four hundred eighty. It's like yeah, but you're not getting the the big credit of five hundred sixty at that level. It's almost totally phased out to thirty five dollars at that level. And you can take a look at the worksheet to kind of consider to to understand the calculations for the credit, but. The general idea that you'd want to have conceptually is, you know, this credit is going to be a lower income threshold credit. It goes up with earned income up to a certain threshold and then basically goes back down again. And it's also going to be dependent on the number of children. Now, another thing that could come up from time to time is if you had non-taxable combat pay. So if you have combat pay, then the benefit usually would be, well, it's not going to be a taxable item. But you could have some situations where you're like, well, I want it to be taxable or at least be included for the calculation of the earned income tax credit. So that's usually a Q designation on the W-2 form. So, for example, if I have the same 16,000, the 10,000 of uh, combat pay non-taxable, if I go back on over, we still have the 16,000 W-2 income. It's not included in the other 10,000 because it's not taxable. And it's not 
doing any adjustment to the $35 for the earned income credit. But you might say, hey, look, in this case, I would like you to add that to the calculation of the earned income tax credit. So elect to, to include non-taxable combat pay. So if I do that, then it removed the credit entirely. Let's bring the combat pay up down a little bit. Uh, let's say let's say it was only like uh, $300. And so if I go back on over, now it brought it down to $12. So if I was under the threshold, then it might be a situation where the combat pay would bring it up. So for example, if I take the combat pay off and let's start, let's say we had basically uh, just 1,000 of income 1000 of income the worksheet is saying we only we got $75 of the earned income tax credit according to the calculation just $1000 of income combat pay not being included and in that case you might say okay look I'd like the combat pay let's say it was let's say it was 5000 of combat pay and I would like you to include that in the calculation of the earned income tax credit then you would have a benefit of the combat pay on the earned income tax credit so that doesn't happen all the time but you get the best of both worlds possibly in that particular situation so you want to have an idea of it you're still for federal income tax purposes getting taxed on the 1000 but you might be able to include that combat pay in the calculation of say earned income tax credit all right, let's go back to the 1000 here and just kind of map this out and see if it makes sense in relation to the tables. So if I say we are $1,000, we're going to say $1,000 here. Obviously, that's below the threshold to, to pay and owe any taxes. You wouldn't even have to file. But if you did file, you might want to still do it because you get like possibly $75 is what the software is calculating for the, for the earned income tax credit. So let's say if I map this out on Excel here, just for the fun of it, we're going to say that the uh, wages is 1000 and we had 78, $78, right? $78 for 1000 And let's go back on over and say, okay, let's bring it up to uh, 2000 If I go to 2000 we're at our 155 And I'm basically making a... A little table here so 2155 I'm kind of mirroring the tables that we see here in the form 1040 instructions so if you go to the 1040 instructions you can find these tables but these tables can be a little bit complicated to look at so if we map it out we could do it like maybe a little bit of a graph and kind of see the curve related to what zero children and then our income levels right so if I go back on over and say, okay, let's do this again. And say we bring it up to 3,000. 3,000, boom. We're at 231. 3,000 is at 231. Two, 231. Going back on over. Then let's go, let's jump it up to 5,000. We'll skip up to 5,000. And now it's at 384 so we'll say 5,000 384 and let's go 7,000 7,000 7,000 brings us up to 537 so 537 let's go to 9,000 9,000 and that brings us up to 560. So we'll say, all right, 9,560. And that's getting close to our threshold here because you'll recall the, the max was the 560, right? So you, going up from this level of income is gonna actually bring it back, is gonna bring it back down at some point. So nine, let's go to 11,000. 11,000 brings it to 417. So 11,417. And let's go back on over and say uh, 13,000. And that's going to be 264. So we'll, get, we'll go, okay, 13,264. And then, 
Let's pull this over here. We're gonna say, okay, 13, 14, 15, thousand it goes up to 16 four so we're almost there 15 thousand it's gonna say a one 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 and then 16 thousand we're getting close to it being phased out completely 35 dollars we saw before and 35 and then if i go to 16 18 thousand it's gonna be down to zero. So 18,000 down to zero. So there's the wages, here's the credit for no children. And if we map that out with like a, a chart, let's go ahead and put a graph together on that and say, I'm gonna insert, let's see what the recommended graph types are. This one looks pretty good. Or we could do it, let's do this, this here. And we'll get rid of the name. And so we get something like that, right? We get a curve uh, that would be obviously as your income, uh, as your, as they've got the income over here, as your income is going up, then the amount of the credit that you're getting is gonna go up, it caps out, and then it goes back down, it caps out at that uh, 560 is the general idea. So what you really wanna have an idea is, is the, what, what's gonna be the shape of this curve at each of these kind of uh, levels. And so if I, if I go back on over and say the credit is gone, if I change it to married, then we can say, let's go to married. And before I do that, by the way, let's just take a look. That curve is similar to this table. So, right. So we've got this table here, which you can find on the form 1040. You could do the same thing and you could say, okay, here's my income levels. Here's zero. Uh, how, you know, where do, where, where am I going to be at if I'm within these earned income levels? So you can see the earned income is going up, up, up. We want to see where it maximizes at that. So it's still going up, 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 up. And then it's going to maximize somewhere here at that 560. So around 7,300 up to, so you can see here when we got to the 560, we were at 9,000. So 7,300 to it's still there at that cap at that 560 to like 9000 and then there's the 9150 and then it goes back down again so if we check another one of our numbers here 15000 15000 is going to be down here so we've got 15000 111 right so 111 coming from the table so that makes sense so we could take that whole table and graph it out and look at this curve although that would you have to get the data from the table so this is just a few a few plot points on on it just to get an idea okay so then if we if we then change it to married it doesn't quite double everything like you might expect but uh but it, the thresholds go up a little bit so now we're married filing joint we're at the eighteen thousand and we still have no income at that level uh because it's because now the standard dedu deduction did double to 25.9 and so we're thinking refundable credits and we're still at the refundable credit level now because we have a different set of tables over here so if i was to look at the tables now the maximum before we phases out completely is at 22,610 22,610 so if this was to keep on going up on the W-2 wages, you can go to 22,000 before it goes away entirely. But so you can see, and you can plot the same kind of graph, right? And if you were looking at this, this table, same table, uh, this is the form 1040 instructions, zero here, but now you're looking at married filing joint and you'd be looking up the same kind of items. So next time we'll do a similar thing for, for one child, two child and three child. So really you have, you know, like a, you've got like eight graphs kind of in your, that you'd have to kind of think about in your mind, right? What, zero children, married or single, one ch child, married or single, has a whole different graph, two children, married or single, three or more children, 
uh, married or single. So that's the general idea. And then the question is, well, what counts as earned income as well? So note that passive income doesn't generally count as earned income. So if I was to have, you know, income from interest or dividends or something, that's not going to typically count in terms of earned income for affecting the credit. However, I, if I have a lot of investment income, like over like 10,000, I think it is, which is kind of unusual if you were going to be calculating the earned income tax credit, then you, you might not get the credit because the idea would then would be, well, if you got that much dividend and interest income, you have you must have a lot of money in the bank or in investments, <laughs> which means it's kind of weird that you would be calculating the earned income credit. You shouldn't really need it, you would think. Uh, in that case. So that's that general idea uh, as well. If you had business income, then that would count as well. So if you didn't have W-2 income, if we take the W-2 income out and you had other business income, and this is where the scammers often come in because with the business income, you can create a Schedule C and, and you can say, okay, this person doesn't have any income. And the scammer will say, okay, I'm just going to maximize out the income to get and I'll just add a Schedule C, right? So they'll, they'll go, okay, I got to make around 9,000 income to, to get the credit because I have to have some income. So let's just say that this was 20,000 minus 11,000 advertising, 11,000. And so now we've got this, and I'm just doing this quickly just to get an idea, but now we got the Schedule C income. The net income is 9,000 which ultimately pulls into page one of the form 1040 of 9,000. So now you've got your income. And if I go to page two and I was looking at, yeah, there's the, there it is. So now you've got your earned income tax credit, right? So that's, and the reason scammers do that is because, is because the W-2 income, there's verification on the IRS's side if they had W-2 income. So they can't really do that. So you can imagine them trying to use some other income like Schedule C income, what you would think would be fairly common because the IRS can't double check that so easy. And so you want to be careful of, you know, the scammy tax preparers because obviously you could be audited to be trying to take advantage of the uh, earned income tax credit by actually trying to increase people's earnings so that they can pick up this credit, which could be substantial, not so much for zero uh, dependents, but once you get to three or more dependents, it starts to be quite substantial uh, as we as we could see and we'll take a look at some more of those tables in future presentations.